With all the talk going on between XDTE and QDTE and which one is better, I thought I would do a video on retiring on XDTE to show how much you need to actually retire on this fund and have its dividends, the weekly dividends, pay out your salary. So that's what we're going to be doing this video. We're going to go over the fund for those that don't know about it. And then we're going to look into the dividend history. We're going to do a drip calculation to see how well this fund has performed, which I was really surprised about actually. And then we're going to throw all of this into a calculation and see how many shares and how much money you have to invest to actually retire yourself off of XDTE alone. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the free discord where we talk about dividends, stocks, investing, all sorts of things. And it's a really good community. So check that out if you are interested and let's jump right into the data. We're going to hit the key points with XDTE and talk about why I think it's a very, very interesting fund. And they do have a new fund that's coming out apparently this month is RDTE. I'm not sure if it's trading yet, but it is going to be really, really interesting to see how that one performs as well. So when it comes to XDTE, this is a zero DTE options on the S&P 500 that seeks to exploit structural marketing mispricings. And so this is all coming from their fact sheet from the Round Hill website. Now, when they're talking about these zero DTE in options terms, for those that don't know options, that's zero days till expiration, meaning it's going to expire at the end of that trading day. So typically volatility on these is high. You can get some pretty decent premiums. And this is how they're able to pay the weekly dividends because they are collecting the premiums every single day. That's also part of the reason why I believe the expense ratio is at almost a full percent because it is a ton of work to write calls consistently and having to do it every single day the market's open is not easy to do and it also is another reason why the dividend history is a bit all over the place because you never know how volatility in the market is going to affect these premiums now the high income potential for xdte is because of this covered call strategy on the s p 500 and what they're doing and i'll explain this is they're seeking to get more price appreciation out of the market than you would from monthly calls which is super super interesting when i first heard this idea i didn't quite understand it it took me a little bit to actually understand this is what they're doing and how it works and i do think it's a really good idea and so that's why i am excited for the other funds they're going to be putting out and then on top of all that, the weekly distributions, they're trying to pay out weekly because of the option premiums, which are coming in each day, which is phenomenal. Everyone loves the weekly, the weekly money. It is, it's outstanding. So some of the stuff on the fact sheet people have pointed out is a little bit old. Like the AUM is 16 million. I guarantee it's above that now. Um, let me, t let me check. According to the website, uh, XDTE's current assets under management, which is the AUM, is about 113 million, which is wild. This thing has been growing like mad. It's it, the popularity is insane. QDTE versus XDTE, it they are both extremely popular now, and I think that they will continue to be so because of the weekly dividends. And people are very, very excited. Like I said, for RDTE. So these funds, they're not going anywhere. If you are looking up stuff you can see that qdte has an insane amount of videos on it a bunch of people are talking about it and for good reason uh, my best video actually my most viewed video on the channel is a video on qdte so what we're going to look at now is the option strategy and how this works now i'm not myself an options trader i do trade options but i'm I primarily i'm a dividend investor but i like to dabble in a bunch of different th things so i'm going to try to explain this so that people can understand so in, mar in market hours, every day, they write a new covered call. And so the covered call is saying that I will sell my shares at this price. And it's a, usually they do out of the money, meaning that the if, if, a, if they're saying we'll sell the, the price for $50, it's sitting at $45. they are not going to count on it to drop. They're, they're relatively safe with their covered calls. And now what this means is every day, you're capped. And they write this down here. You're capped at what you can make. Each trading day, the fund will sell a covered call against its position in the index, seeking to generate options. Income daily returns are capped at the sold strike. So if you're selling a strike at $50 and the underlying, the S&P goes to 52, you are only capped at making that $50 a share. You will not get the extra two. And that's kind of the fear with this. Now, the overnight long only, the difference is during the overnight session, the fund will no longer hold any option positions, resulting in full exposure to the index. Now, the way that this is interesting compared to other funds is when you have monthly, monthly paying monthly premiums or even less 25 day, anything less than zero days till expiration, you do not have access to the price appreciation that happens in the aftermarket and pre-market hours. And that is because your options contract is 
throughout all of that. Whereas the daily, they write a new one every single day. So that's not the best explanation. But basically what these funds do is they give you the ability to still make money on what the position does after hours and pre-market, which a lot happens after hours and pre-market if you don't know. So that's what makes this thing different. And it is really, really interesting and such a really, it's a really smart concept in my opinion. Um, that being said, if the thing tanks in the after hours, if the S&P 500 drops, you will also feel that drop. So all in all, it depends on if you think the market's going to go up or go down, if you like this idea or not. So that's basically an explanation. I have explained these a couple times. So if you're bored of that, I apologize. Um, but real quick, I actually, let's look at what they call the, the distribution rate. Currently, it's roughly 26%. So a pretty phenomenal yield. QDTE says it's, a, it's a, over the 40s now, but I still think, like people are saying, XDTE is going to be the better option. So now let's look at the dividend history and see what this thing has been paying investors. The dividend has been performing well for this fund, I will say. It is up the last couple of weeks simply because of volatility in the market. We've been seeing a ton of volatility and came down a little bit. The problem with these is the, the distributions can range heavily depending on, like I said, the volatility, the premium prices, and how the, the fund performs, meaning the low dividend uh, was $0.02 cents and the high of $0.41. Cents. So some crazy highs and lows. If you can stomach that, that's great. If you can't, if you're planning on relying on this money uh, to live off of, like we're talking about for this video, it might be difficult with the inconsistencies unless you have enough to where $0.02 cents wouldn't hurt you too badly. Now, there's a ton of distributions, but again, this thing's only been trading since March, so don't, don't forget that. These are very new funds. There's a lot of risk that goes into these newer ETFs as well. Not necessarily by, by the way that they're trading, but just because newer, it can be difficult. You have less history. They've seen less volatility in the market, less crazy dips, so that's always important to remember, but the weekly dividends are pretty phenomenal. We can jump over to the dividend scorecard and see that they the dividend yield will be off because they haven't been trading for the full year. But so far, they've paid out about $6 since March in the weekly dividends, which is phenomenal. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. I have been happy with what I got from QDTE, and I think it will continue to do well. So now what we're going to do, we're going to plug this all into a drip calculator, which will tell us how the fund has performed since its inception. Now I'm going to do this twice. First, we're going to do it against the S&P 500, which is the underlying fund QDTE is traded on. And the results are very, very interesting. If you've seen me do this before, it's very rare that the underlying fund does worse than the ETF writing covered calls on it. But in this case, that is what happened. We have seen a total return of 8.21% from XDTE with the dividends reinvested versus SPY with a total return of 6.81%. Now it's close, but that is because they've only compared since March. With dividends not reinvested, they're even closer with 7.8% for XDTE and 6.8% from, from SPY. So this is very interesting because even with dividends not reinvested, it still has outperformed, meaning it has been very, very solid. Now let's compare this one to other. Let's do QDTE and see the difference. Now this one is very, very interesting. XDTE far outperforms percentage-wise QDTE at an 8.21% to a 3.66% return with dividends reinvested and not reinvested 7.8 to a 3.5. So more than double in both instances. Now I'm not saying one is better than the other. They probably both have their place depending on the assets and the fund that you like, but this is a big tell for me. And I may be at, uh, moving some of my QDTE to XDTE after running all of these numbers. A few things to cover before we jump into the calculation is firstly, this is all an assumption. This is based off of the current distribution rate. We're not going to factor in dividend increases or decreases or price appreciation or depreciation just because we don't know what's going to happen. And I'm not trying to predict that by any means. Um, so that's really, really important. And, and this is not financial advice. I'm not saying it's going to do this. This is not, like I said, a prediction. We're just seeing what the numbers give us so far, which I think is, is very, very important. And secondly, the distribution frequency changes the outcome. Now, I have had a few people talk to me in the comments saying it doesn't, but it does. And until someone can prove me wrong, which I, if I'm wrong, I am more than happy to be, please convince me because I will listen, I will. Um, but the way this works, and let me explain this, if you're getting a quarterly dividend, you're getting four payments a year. So if you got a quarterly dividend of $25, you had $100 a year, 
and you factor that into getting paid weekly. The difference with these weekly paying dividend ETFs, the, the only real difference is if you're reinvesting the dividend. If you're not, then that makes sense. You're not, you're getting the same amount from both. If you are reinvesting, you're able to compound more because that first week when you get paid that dividend, it reinvests into the fund. And so the next dividend you're going to get a percentage based off all of the money you have in the fund, which will now be greater than a fund that pays monthly or quarterly because you have purchased more shares. So I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my brain. It might not in yours. If it doesn't, let me know. But that's why they are different. That's how I see them as being different. And if you disagree, again, please let me know. So starting with 100 shares and our share price currently, you would get about you'd have ten thousand dollars invested in the fund and your annual dividend income would be just under three grand which is nowhere near where we need to be we need to be at sixty thousand dollars which sixty thousand dollars what i pulled from forbes is the average american salary now I, again i've had people in the comments talking about this and that's that's what forbes said i'm gonna go based off what they said it may be a little bit higher a little bit lower but i think that's a pretty fair assessment it's not too high it's not too low so we're gonna go with sixty thousand dollars that's what i'm gonna use um, so we're going to jump into that. So let's jump from a hundred to a thousand and see how this number changes. And it is a big difference. We now have $56,000 invested after one year <clears throat> and our annual dividend income is $16,452. Still not even close to what we need, but it is pretty phenomenal. So let's do it again. Let's go 3000 shares, which is $157,000, which now gets us $46,367 every single year. Now, this is phenomenal. It's an insane amount of dividend income, and if we were to turn on drip, it would change everything. But it's still not enough. So let's go up to 4000 and see what this gets us. Just where we need to be. Right over $60,000, but still relatively close. So a balance of $207,747 gets you $61,324.36 every single year. So you can replace your income if you're surviving off of $60,000 a year. Now, that being said... How is the world going to look in 10, 20, 30 years? $60,000 will not likely be enough. So think of that when you're thinking about what funds you're going to be purchasing when you are retiring. You're going to be retiring in numerous years, depending on where you are at in life. So think about that. <clears throat> now, what I want to point out too, is if we add drip and we go from one year to two years, this changes significantly. So in two years with drip on, your ending balance is $351,000 and your annual dividend income is $103,000, which is crazy. And the more we do this, we'll, we can even bump back down to 100 shares, a more realistic amount. But let's go to 10 years and see the power of compounding these weekly dividends. So we can see the total dollars, you start with $11,629. And over a 10 year span, you end with just under $300,000. Your yield on cost is insane at 122.84%. But we don't have yield going up. So that's a, probably a bit of a miscalculation. But total dividend payments over the 10 years is $200,000, which is all pumped back into your underlying um, into the fund itself, which is phenomenal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're interested. Check out the free Discord, and I hope to see you in the next video.